Yep. Go. Is this thing on? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's on. Hi. Yes, it's on. What's up? Listen, so we got coronavirus going on. We got snow going on, but Coach Pete never stops. So I'm going to make a video today on the two most basic pitching drills, and everybody knows what they are. The drill that never, ever, ever goes away. The rocker and the super rocker. So I have with me my human guinea pig for five and a half years, Nicholas, who will be 11 in June. So people ask why he's so good. It's because he does the work and he actually lets me tell him what to do, which, you know, so shouldn't. he doesn't. He <laughs> shouldn't. One of the reasons why he's so good. So what we're going to do is just the regular rocker drill, and we're going to get this perfect, right? So the key to the rocker drill, what is the rocker drill all about? So that's a question, right? So most kids, when you're doing the rocker drill, if you don't understand what it does for you, you're probably not going to do it right, okay? So I know through lessons we go through them quick, and I don't have a chance to really explain everything that I want to explain. I try, but I want to be really clear on this, okay? The rocker drill and the super rocker drill emphasize hip rotation. The hip rotation is the single most important move in any pitching mechanics. I'll say it again. The hip rotation is the single most important move in pitching mechanics, as it is in hitting. So the rocker drill and the super rocker emphasize powerful, strong hip rotation with staying straight, staying low, and following through. So what am I looking for when Nicholas starts doing the regular drill? Just that, right? I'm looking for his setup. I'm looking for his hip rotation. I'm looking for his feet to rotate, and I'm looking for his finish to stay straight. So we're just going to do a few of these. Hopefully, hopefully he gets a few right, and then we can understand. So and hopefully we can then move on to the super rocker drill. So there's no pressure on him whatsoever. So if any of you ever get a chance to be on a film with me, there's no pressure, and you never know who I'm going to nab to be on camera next. Okay? Me. So, here, no, not after you. All right, so here we go. Regular rocker drill. So as you can see here, I have a piece of tape. We're lucky enough. So we are in Coach Pete's man cave. Uh, my man cave is used for working out. It's used for watching football and sports and all my sports stuff and all my Mets stuff and Giants stuff and Ranger stuff and everything. And the TV, go Mets. And the TV are here. So this is where I do a lot of my working out and my thinking. So fortunate enough, I laid down a piece of tape for Nicholas to stay straight. So at home, if you're not fortunate enough to be able to put tape on the floor, just take a long towel, roll it up really tight, and lay it straight on the floor, okay? So we have it for the super rocker. I just took a regular towel, rolled it up so it looks like a pitching rubber, all right? So no pressure, Nicholas. Let's see if you can get this on the first <laughs> once or try. So the starting position is crucial, right? Bend your knees. You like bending your knees? Okay. So we want this L right here. Arm up here, away, okay? Bend the elbow a little bit. Little bit. Little bit. Thank you. <laughs> so, here we go. So, regular rocker drill, not super. This is the regular rocker drill, all right? Okay, go. Okay, so on this one, you can see as front, he, he corrected it. So, his front foot wasn't turned completely. So, on the next one, what I'm looking for is for that toe to get completely turned. That complete turn on the front foot means you've got your complete hip rotation, right? If you finish here, what's going to happen is when you lift and land on your pitch, your foot is going to end up crooked, right? Facing the wrong direction. We need it perfectly straight. So try it again. Yep. Okay. A lot better. So one thing that I noticed in Nicholas doing this earlier is when he was warming up is he was finishing with his right shoulder turned this way, okay? So we don't want that. And this actually explains something as to he was struggling while we're working, pulling his pitches to the left. It makes perfect sense. So what it means to me is that when he was doing his rocker drills, he was turning his shoulder this way. What this means is your upper body, you're pulling with your upper body or going too much with your upper body. So if you're finishing this drill with your shoulder out front, the ball is gonna get pulled down to the left. Right, so this is going to become a habit. It's going to become automatic if you keep doing it incorrectly. Okay, so what I want to see is straight finish, right? Eyes bite the burger, the start of the trail leg here. So that's what I'm working with Nicholas on, 
is to get this drill so that his shoulders are square and he's bent down. So let's see if you can nail it. A lot better. Yep, a lot better. So go one more time. And if you can see, watch closely, watch closely how his shoulders, if his shoulders are square and if both his feet turn. Much better. Still look, you're pretty good. So here, so he's still say he's a little tilted. So I'd still rather see this straight. So no pressure on Nicholas. So let's see if he can get at least one straight. You know, just one would be good. You know what I'm saying? At least so one. At least one would be good. All right. So behind the behind the camera is 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 uh, one of my other human guinea pigs, Matthew. More of a human right. guinea pig on hitting. He's the catcher in the family. Okay. So let's yes, go see if we can I'm get this right. Okay. Much better, much better. Still a little tilt. Try it again. We'll do it one more time. And then maybe I'll have to do it. I don't know. You can watch me fall down because that's usually what happens to me when I do drill. No, don't fall down. I'll be bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, never fall. I never fall down. Only when I'm walking. Yeah. <laughs> like only when you're moving. Mm -hmm. Much better. Way, way better. Both feet straight, shoulders square. So that's what we're looking for. So give me time one second. So again, to show what I'm going to do here really quick to end this, this, this part of the video is I'm going to start with the finish. Okay. The finish is both feet, shoelaces, your shoelaces, perfectly straight, your shoulders, perfectly straight, finish down here, here, right? This is what we're looking for. This is the finish we're looking for. So how do I get there? Body movements, right? You rock back and forth, you load up here, you go. The first thing that should go is your core. Your core, your core ignited turns your hips. That's your stomach muscles for your young pitchers. Your stomach muscle, your side muscles, and your back. Right. So why am I doing the rocker drill? I'm, you're doing the rocker drill to learn the hip rotation, to stay straight and to finish low, and eyes bite the burger trail of the leg. So if I go really slow here, turn, right, my eyes stay straight, I come through the throw, and I finish right here. This is what you want. Shoulder square, both feet straight, towel to the floor here. And for those that have been with me for a while, know my quarter story. And you're probably all laughing, but you know the quarter story. I, don't, I, don't, I won't make you pick up a quarter unless I really have to. But we, this is the finish that we want right here. Okay? So, again, what does the rocker drill do? Why do I have to know what the rocker drill does? You have to know because you have to know why you're doing it. If you don't know why you're doing it, then you're probably going to do it incorrectly and you're not going to put as much focus on it as you should. I've said a million times, the rocker drill will make or break you as a pitcher. It will make you as a pitcher if you get it right, if you get the repetitions right. When we talk about 1,000, 10,000 perfect repetitions, that's that perfect finish absolutely crucial. If you don't nail the perfect finish in your body's turning, as I said, as we were going through with Nicholas, with that shoulder turning to the, to the left here more, your front shoulder out, the ball gets pulled. It's the same thing if you finish high. Here, up here, you're not, all of your pitches are going to go high. You're going to just finish high. So we want you to finish down here. Okay? So that's our demonstration of the regular rocker drill. We'll be back shortly and we'll go over the super rocker drill, which is a little bit, a little bit different. So we'll see you in a few. Thanks. Is this thing on now? Yes, it's, it's on. on now? It's on. It's on now. It's recording. All right, so welcome back. We are going to go through what I call the super rocker drill. I don't know what everybody else calls it, but it's a super rocker drill. So what's the difference between the super rocker and the rocker? The super rocker starts with... You're creating that butt turn down low. Most of you know by now what that butt turn is. It's the turning of the hips to start the hip rotation. It's turning of your butt. The butt turn here, here. So what we don't want you doing in this drill is standing up. So you still start low, right? Everyone's going to, I know this, I know this, I know this. But again, I know you know it, but it's how you do it. You know how to do it, but are you doing it correctly? That's the thing. So... 
you put a camera in front of you, we've talked about this, you can do it in front of a mirror, your dad or mom watching you, something so that you know that you're doing it right. So you're down here low, you stay low, right? So the biggest mistake that I've seen most of my pitchers make in this drill is that when they lift here, they stand up and it becomes their regular pitch. That's a totally different drill, okay? So we need you low and we need you to stay low. So major differences are, you can start with your hands together here, right? Normal pitch. Low, being low is the same. The first, you rock a little bit to gain momentum and to load up. Load up by back here. You lift your knee, kind of bring your knee somewhere near your belly ball and then get your butt out front. This, now as you go, ignites the core, creates the hip rotation. You will go harder and faster, obviously, with this one. So after we lift and go, right, we land, we turn straight and we go. Now you have the ability to finish your pitch. The finish of the pitch is not just the arm follow through. Now it's the trail and the leg whip through. So a lot of you I know, especially the younger pitchers, are struggling with getting that back foot around, okay? Some of you pick it up pretty quickly, release it. All I can tell you is release it. It's got to go somewhere. If you keep your trail foot back, it's going to do the opposite of what you want it to do. The key to the trail is it's your last line of defense for accuracy. It is your last line of defense for staying low and it is your last line of defense for velocity, which is the opposite of what a lot of coaches teach. And I'm gonna explain qu really quickly why. So when you finish here, when we talk about biomechanics, we talk about getting the whole entire body into the pitch, okay? You can't do that if you release the back leg early because you're really not getting this or your lower back most importantly, your lower back into the pitch and finishing high. So when we trail, when you trail, you forcefully trail, you stay down. Now my lower back is in the pitch because I'm down low. Here, trail, now I come up. Now my whole body is in the pitch, especially the lower back. So basically, super rocker. Start with your hands close. Lift up your knee this way. Start that whip. The slingshot move, the butt move here, boom, go, go through the whole entire pitch, okay? So my human guinea pig is back. So what we have, we have a piece of tape that he's, that we've marked what his trail should be, right? All of you know it should be one and a half to two of your feet, okay? So I just laid a towel, you can take a towel at home, just folded it up so it's his pitching rubber, right? So those are his guides. So he's gonna do a few here, let's see what happens. actually really good. Do it again. You weren't expecting it? No, I wasn't expecting it that well for the first time. But this is the drill Nicholas does more of. He does more of these than the regular rocket drills. And we can talk about that in a second. Yeah, way better. One more time. It's really good. Okay, so... Good job, really good job. So for Nicholas, this is his normal rocker drill. He doesn't do many of the regular rockers. So he sticks with the super rocker because it gets his finish. But in this one, it seems as though he ended up straighter on this than he did on the previous, which I don't know, go ask him why that happens. I have no idea. Um, so again, what you're doing here, so most of you know by now, the three basic moves at the beginning of the pitch is the leg lift, the butt turn, and the sink, right? Well, your sink is already here. We're moving, we're taking the leg lift out, and we're just kind of doing a butt turn, lift and butt turn here, just like Nicholas did. Get your butt out front, boom, fire, bang, finish. So what am I getting out of the super rocker? You're getting the same thing that you're getting out of the regular rocker, Right, except you are now finishing the pitch, creating that trail for a one or one and a half to two of your feet, and releasing coming around. Whether why are getting in my way? Um, whether it's around high or through. What I don't want you to do with that drag is bring your foot all the way through. You gotta let it go. 
It's the trail here. So I'm going to talk about this really quick because I think it's important. There are a lot of coaches out there that say you don't trail your foot. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. This is really important. For those that don't believe the trail of the foot is important, here are guys that I want you to go and look at on YouTube and break it down frame by frame. I want you to pull up uh, Justin Verlander. I want you to pull up Max Scherzer. I want you to pull up Jacob DeGrom. I want you to pull up Noah Syndergaard. I want you to pull up Araldis Chapman and Zach Greinke and a number of others. And if you slow the video down almost frame by frame, you will see this trail. I guarantee it. And you will see the bending of the back, the follow through the finish, and then the release. Why are they doing the trail? Just what I told you. Last line of defense for accuracy. Last line of defense for getting low and staying low. And last line of defense for velocity because we are now getting the lower back into the pitch. If you pitch like this, your lower back is completely left out of the picture. It is the most powerful part of the body from here to here. The most powerful part of the body. And if you're talking about pitching using your entire body, which is what biomechanics is all about, you're leaving out the strongest part of your body. You're leaving out a lot of velocity on your pitch. So again, like I said, I've had this discussion with, many, with a lot of people. You don't believe me? Pull up the guys that have lasted forever, right? I just saw pictures and was comparing Tom Seaver, who my idol. I just posted some stuff on Facebook. You can go look at it. Tom Seaver trailed. He had that drag. So did Greg Maddox for all you Cubs fans. I'm sorry. But anyway, I had to mention him because of his accuracy. That was his accuracy. So, again, the difference between rocker and super rocker is you get the chance to finish the pitch with the trail, the whip around, and still finish straight. If you don't finish straight and you keep pulling to one side or you're falling off to the right, anyway, that's the way your pitching mechanics are going to go. Finish straight. The key to accuracy is your entire body going straight in one direction. One direction. If I have eyes, bite the burger, trail the leg, and boom, release, my whole body is going in one direction towards home plate. What creates pinpoint accuracy? That's a, another discussion for another day. So, in the end, what do we have? We have the two most crucial, most important, most effective pitching drills ever created. No, I was not smart enough to make this up. I always tell you, I learned this stuff. The rocker and the super rocker. I know a lot of college pitchers, pitchers that live off the super rocker or some version of it. They even use it as part of their pregame warm-up. It's some of the first things that they do to get their body going straight and to start triggering the hip rotation, triggering their core. Again, hip rotation. What's the most important movement is your hip rotation. That's what both of these do, drills do. Pitching is hip rotation with a downward finish, staying straight. That's in a nutshell. So that's what these two drills do. You can never do enough of them perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. You can't do enough. I don't care if you're at 9,000, keep going. They never stop. They just don't stop. It is the one drill that should pull you back to center. And I'm going to make a suggestion to all of you that before you even pitch, whether you're at practice with your team, or you're at a practice game, or a regular game, do about 15 to 20 either regular rockers or super rockers as part of your pregame warm-up. You will see a huge difference to the start of your game, okay? You will start straighter, not falling off balance, okay? You will get your core going, right? That's where the velocity is, right? And you'll start finishing low. So remember, in the end, what I say for the past months now is my three lines. The legs and the core feed the beast. Who's the beast? You are. So unleash the beast. These, these are just two of the drills that help you learn how to unleash the beast. So on this coronavirus day and the snow day, this Coach Pete saying, I'm out for now. We'll catch you soon. We'll do a lot more. We're working on video lessons. Uh, we're working on possibly doing lessons outside uh, and a few other things. So bear with me. We're going to pull some stuff together. Uh, thank you to Nicholas for showing off and to Matthew, the cameraman. And uh, we'll be back with some hitting stuff, basic hitting stuff, shortly.